What's up, everybody? Welcome to Moxie Bets, presented by Caesar Sportsbook. I'm your girl, Katie Mox, and today we are talking NBA play-in tournament picks and finals future with prop stars. The man they call prop stars, Alex Selznick um, of CBS Sports and of Sportsline Proppy. You know I couldn't talk about the NBA finals or NBA playoffs, excuse me, uh, without you, because tell the people what your record is right now in the NBA. Uh, Katie, thank you so much. I'm honored to be here. Usually we get to talk uh, football, so it's a privilege mm-hmm. getting to uh, chop up NBA basketball with you. But it's been a great season for me in NBA. I'm up, I believe, close to 60 units on the That's sports line side. So, yeah, it's been, a, it's, been, it's been an awesome 60, season, Katie. Prop star, 60, 60 units. units. I could only dream of something like mm-hmm. that. All right, so... Let's just get into this right now. So the regular season has ended. We are finally here into the playoffs. Of course, the play-in tournament happens before. Um, all right, so here is the seedings as they stand right now. In the East, you got the Celtics versus the number eight seed, and then you got the Knicks, the number two seed. A lot of a lot of Knicks fans, I think, wanted them to keep the number three seed considering who they're going to have to face um, in the first round. But they play the seven seed. Then we got the Bucks versus the Pacers, the Cavs versus the Magic. Um, And of course, those two Eastern Conference play in tournaments, Sixers and the Heat and the Bulls and the Hawks. And then over to the West, we're looking at the number one seed, the Thunder versus the eight seed, the Nuggets versus the seven seed, Wolves versus the Suns, and then the Clippers and the Mavs. And I'm real excited about this play in tournament, obviously, because my Warriors have made it in. They're going to take on the Kings. Um, Kings better see they're at number nine. And then the Pelicans and the Lakers, um, including the play-in tournament, I guess. Which series or which game are you looking forward to the most? I'm just so excited. I, this is, we've reached the yeah. stage of the NBA, NBA season, Katie, where uh, we don't we can throw out you know big 20 point spreads and all sorts yes. of players who are questionable yes. who might have rest management. We've we've reached the point where we see maximum effort. Uh, this is really when it's exciting to be a basketball fan. Uh, looking at the Western Conference, for instance, it, it looks wide open to me, Katie. You could tell me pretty much any of the teams, including the teams in the play, and your Warriors, uh, the Lakers, the Pelicans. It wouldn't shock me if any of those teams reach the NBA Finals, uh, even in the Eastern Conference, where we have a huge favorite in Boston, uh, the Philadelphia 76ers or the New York Knicks were to upset them. That wouldn't shock me either. I just think there's so much parity uh, for the first time in a really long time in the NBA. It's wide open. I believe for the first time in NBA history, 10, ga- 10, te- excuse me, 10 teams in the West, or is either eight or 10 teams, finish 10 games above 500. So just a ton of great basketball. And yeah, I just could not be more excited. Well, especially because in the beginning of the season, and I just feel like in general over the last couple of seasons, the West gets kind of disrespected and and people are always looking at the Eastern Conference as the big, bad, scary conference. I mean, obviously, uh, Nuggets excluded in this. But uh, so it's interesting that 10 or, or 8 or 10, whichever the number is, of these Western teams um, finished above 500. Very, very exciting. And I'm going to tell you right now, and it's nothing that you need to know. Don't count those Warrior Boys out. They have been hot recently and they get into the playoffs. They are always a threat. So when you look at these right now, is there anywhere where you're seeing value? Like you said, you wouldn't be surprised if a lot of things happen, a lot of upsets in this first round. Is there one that you've kind of zeroed in on? I I really like your Golden State Warriors, Katie. I'm surprised that actually they're not larger favorites against Sacramento. A Sacramento team that really hasn't been playing well down the stretch. They're also missing two key players and Kevin Horder, Malik Monk, arguably two of their three or four best shooters, their sixth man. Uh, It's going to be really a two-man show for the Kings. I've just been so impressed with the Warriors down the stretch. Their defense has really come on strong. They're deep. I I love the addition of Trace Jackson Davis to the starting lineup, playing valuable minutes at center, allowing Draymond uh, to play in his more natural position at power forward. I've seen Andrew Wiggins really look good, uh, sort of the player that was a major contributor to their uh, last finals run, being able to guard the opposing team's best players. Steph Curry, as good as ever. One guy I want to give credit to, though, Katie, is Clay Thompson. I just remember it was a few months ago, so many people in the media were proclaiming that his career was over it was just so premature to me a guy that's a high volume shooter of course there's going to be just natural ebbs and flows i'm not saying we're still looking at 
prime Clay Thompson, but to me, he's still a very good player in the league, and I'm so happy to see him playing well down the stretch. He's obviously been a big reason why this Warriors team is playing as well as they are. So I think that they're going to take care of Sacramento. I think they're going to make. Uh, I think they're going to advance to the NBA playoffs, and I don't think any team wants to face them. Hell yeah, <laughs> from <Rob> stars. <laughs> Hell yeah, and I agree with you. Look, it's been it's been a rough couple years from Clay, but let's not forget he came off two absolutely major injuries, came back. Um, and I'm telling you, if Clay Thompson gets hot, good luck to anybody because you know Steph's going to take care of business. Um, and then you got some of those younger guys really stepping into their role. But it it is kind of hit or miss, so we'll see. But I agree. We're getting into that game, but let's start with this first game. We got the Lakers. And the Pelicans, this line is a pick em. It's interesting, though, because it opened, I believe, with the Pelicans as three-point favorites. But the public loves to bet the Lakers. I believe 85% of spread bets right now are on the Lakers. So this line has moved all the way down to a pick em on Caesars. You can find it minus one, minus one and a half, depending um, on where you are line shopping. So this one is interesting, right? There's a lot of history between these two teams, um, going back all the way to Anthony Davis, right? Back in 2019 in that trade. Last year in the play-in tournament, the Lakers advanced as the seven seed. They are 2-0 and all-time in the play-in tournament, so they're pretty good in the play-in, seeking their fourth playoff appearance in the last five years. This would be, though, prop stairs, their first play-in tournament on the road. Um, a lot of these have been at home from them. And uh, they're 11 and three since March 18th, tied for the best record in the NBA um, on the road this season, which I think is pretty impressive for them. And then you got the Pelicans. Um, they last managed the playoffs, I believe, in the 2021 22 season, two and one in the play in tournament all time, third straight season in the play in, um, struggled to get out of it last year. They're not so great at home 21 and 19 at home this season, still a winning record, but just barely. Um, what are your thoughts on this game? This is such a fascinating matchup to me, Katie. I really think uh, it makes sense to me that this game is a pick em. I really could see this going either way. If you would have asked me, it's interesting, two weeks ago, uh, if I would have known these teams were matching up in their current or their, 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 their iteration two weeks ago, I would have said this, the Pelicans were maybe not a significant favorite, but I would have been a more confident in the Pelicans at that stage. I, I actually think even though they're more talented on paper with Brandon Ingram in the lineup, they were playing so well, Katie, without him. I really yeah. think they had kind of found their groove. Their defense was phenomenal. I love their ability to play small with Larry Nance at center. And then suddenly – with just one game remaining in the season, you're inserting a guy that's a high usage player. Yes, Brandon Ingram is very talented, but that's a big adjustment. CJ McCollum was playing the best basketball of his career. Suddenly, yeah. he's more of a, a, a tertiary scorer behind Zion and behind Brandon Ingram. So I actually preferred this Pelicans team. Uh, when Ingram was on the bench, I think it's just kind of going to put them in this awkward position where you have a talented player who's suddenly, uh, you know, going to be thrust into a significant role, a high usage role. And I just don't have the same level of confidence on both ends of the court. Uh, Zion was yeah. playing close to an MVP level, Katie. Uh, I've just yeah. been so impressed with him. I just really think the Pelicans found a real identity on both ends of the court. And then you insert Brandon Ingram, who, again, is a talented player, uh, but just the chemistry is not going to be there. It just disrupts things. Uh, and as far as the Lakers are concerned, they, I feel like, have found their identity. LeBron still playing at a very high level. Yeah. Anthony Davis, one of the best two-way players in the NBA. Uh, the one thing I do favor New Orleans, I think they have the better defense, Katie. So I yes. look to their yes. defense. I think they're still very talented offensively. I give a slight lean to the Pelicans here. Yeah. Uh, again, I think it's you know a very close game i could see either team winning obviously uh but yeah if this pelicans team that we've seen over the last month and a half shows up i think they handle the lakers couldn't agree with you more and shout out to zion right he's taken a lot of flack and and a lot of it self-deserved over the last couple of years um about his weight about his desire to play and his competitive edge um and i feel like we've really seen him 
come to life, especially in the second half of this season. His weight looks great. Like you said, he's playing, you know, an MVP kind of caliber level. And that really has been such a huge change for the Pelicans because they had this star that was just dragging his feet for a couple of years. So um, really excited to see him step into who we thought he was going to be coming out of the draft. And I agree with you. I'm taking Pelicans money line on this one, too. But there is something interesting to look out for is that if New Orleans is down at the half and more specifically in the third quarter, this might be one where you start to hedge your bet on the other side. I was looking at one of our research docs. They're four and 20 when trailing at halftime this season. It's the second fewest wins tied with Detroit, but they're 0 and 22 when trailing at the end of the third quarter. So if they're trailing at the end of the third quarter, you might hedge your bet, maybe take a money line or something um, or some kind of bet on the Lakers, because this doesn't seem to be a team that can get it done if they are trailing. And, And apparently no team in NBA history has made playoffs after failing to win a single game when trailing at the end of the third quarter. So um, something to look out for there, um, but agree with you. I think that the Pelicans have the better defense and they should be able to uh, take care of business. Now, for my favorite matchup, the 9 and 10 between the Golden State Warriors and the Sacramento Kings. So this line, let me pull it up right here. All right, two. Golden State favored by two here, 130 on the money line. This total set to 226 and a half. It is a rematch of the 2023 first round series between the Warriors and the Kings. The Kings won the first two games at home, but then the Warriors won the series in seven. um, And I believe they actually did that in Sacramento as well. Steph Curry became the first person to score 50 points in a game seven in NBA playoff history that has since been done. Actually, I think actually in in that same 2020-2023 season, it happened right after. Um, He's the third most combined points in a single playoff series since at least the 1970-71 series. When we look at this season, they are tied two and two. But like we said earlier, I know you are you like the Warriors to get out of this one. I'm going to go ahead and lay the two, two and a half, uh, whatever it is. They have just been, the Warriors have been hot. They've won 10 of their final 12 games in the regular season. It's the best record in the NBA since March 26th. They also have a better record on the road this season, which is crazy they're 25 and 16 on the road just 21 and 20 at home this season it's the first time in warriors history that they have more road wins than home wins i believe it was steph curry that said i don't know if we got to stay in a hotel or something in san francisco (laughs) and pretend like we're on the road but of course this game will be in um sacramento and look this king's team they have lost seven of their last 11 games they had a chance prop to get the six seed and avoid the play-in altogether, and they couldn't do that. I'm telling you, this Kings team could be up 50 points, and I would still bet on the other team at the rate that they have been giving up leads. So give me the Warriors, minus the two. A full agreement here with you, Katie. I think you laid it out very well. Just looking at this Kings team, uh, they do have two great players, Darren Fox and Sabonis, who have been really tremendous all season long. I just don't think that's enough, frankly, especially when we're looking at a Warriors team that has as deep as an 8, 9, 10-man rotation if they absolutely yes. need to. I've just been so impressed with the Warriors' depth. I've been so impressed with their defense down the stretch. As you mentioned, they're just playing so well, as well as any team, uh, you know, post all-star break, I would say the Warriors and the Dallas Mavericks have been the two best teams uh, in the league since the all-star break. But yeah, Steph is in, you know, playoff form. We've got Clay shooting very well. Uh, Andrew Wiggins, who got off to a really rough start early in the season. I like what I've seen from him, particularly on the defensive side. He's primarily tasked with slowing down the opposing team's best perimeter scorer uh, and he does a fine job at that I just think with Sacramento they just will run they've run out of gas frankly just not having that depth down the stretch uh, really hurt them just not having a reliable third scorer even really a fourth scorer a guy they can depend on to get them 15 to 20 points if De'Aaron Fox uh, isn't playing well or Sabonis Uh, isn't getting, you know, a massive triple-double. So they kind of need a Herculean effort from both Sabonis and Fox to even have a chance. One thing I also just want to highlight is the Warriors' defense has been just impressive as their offense down the stretch. One of my more profitable betting angles has been taking the Warriors to uh, limit the opposing team's leading scorer, whether that be a center, a point guard, a small forward. They have been so good at slowing down the opposing team's 
primary weapon. So I think they'll have an answer for De'Aaron Fox. I think he puts a bonus in a position where as great as he is, he's more of a facilitator, kind of like a poor man's Nikola Jokic, still great player in his own right, but he's not a guy that's going to get you 30 points. Yeah. He's a guy that's no. more comfortable setting up his teammates. So I think yeah. you force De'Aaron Fox, you blitz him. I think the Warriors will put a lot of energy and resources into slowing down Fox. And I just don't think the Kings will have enough firepower to keep up with this Warriors team on both ends of the court. So I could see the Warriors winning this game by double digits, frankly. So I, one, I love that too. I love this angle um, because you are prop stars, right? You're the guy that is killing it on all of the props. There's no props available yet. This is Monday. These games aren't until, you know, Tuesday evening. So that's one angle that we're looking at for the Warriors game, the Warriors defense and their ability to limit the top scores for the opposing team. So maybe, you know, we'll see what's what what do you predict that Fox's line is going to be? And, and at what point would you consider not taking the under? Yeah, so I do anticipate, you know, De'Aaron Fox, uh, he is going to play massive minutes. It wouldn't surprise me if he plays the entire second half, probably plays in that range of 38 to 42 minutes, barring foul trouble. Uh, I anticipate he'll have uh, a points line, probably 29 and a half to 31 and a half. Uh, his PRA line somewhere in the 40 to 42 and a half range. Uh, I will be potentially looking to fade him. Uh, I just think the Warriors are going to be blitzing him frequently, really trying to get the ball out of his hands, kind of force other guys like Keegan Murray, Harrison Barnes uh, into high volume roles where they're not really comfortable and consistent. I think they'd much rather want a guy like Harrison Barnes and Sabonis to be shooting 15, 20 plus times and have a guy like De'Aaron Fox, obviously, who's capable uh, of going crazy. So yeah, I would look to fade De'Aaron Fox. Or, 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 yeah, I just think he's a really good candidate. I probably yeah. wouldn't go much lower than as far as his points under 28 and a half. And then his PRA, okay. I wouldn't dip lower than 37 and a half. Okay, good, good, good there. And I'm going to be like the wine mom on the couch with Draymond Green. It's okay, Draymond. It's okay. Calm down. Stay in the game. Because when we talk about the defense, we know that he has a bit of a hot head. I have a very polarizing view of Draymond. I love him. I hate him. I think that's how all uh, Warriors fans feel. But as long as he can stay in the game, um, I agree with you. All right, so let's move on to the Eastern Conference matchups on Wednesday. Miami is in a very familiar territory as the eight seed. Um, of course, last season from the same position, they ran through the East, losing to the Nuggets in the final. Joel Embiid recently returned from injury for the Sixers. They've won eight straight. When we look at this line, it's five. The Sixers are favored by five here. Total 207 and a half. Uh, Miami Heat money line. If you think they could have a similar run to last year, that's at plus one seventy five. What are you thinking for this game? Uh, this game really fascinates me as well, Katie. I think both these teams uh, have the ability to be to play great basketball. Frankly, if you told me the Heat were in the finals again this year, I wouldn't bat an eye. And same thing applies yeah. for the Seventy Sixers. But I've just been so impressed with Joel and Bead since returning to the lineup. Katie, he has not missed a step. He looks to be uh, the same MVP favorite that he was prior to experiencing uh, the knee injury, just playing phenomenal basketball. I just love what the Sixers did, though. Uh, they didn't make a big splash acquisition, but they added a lot of veteran guys. Kyle, yeah. Kyle Lowry, a former player on the Miami Heat, who's obviously uh, you know familiar, very familiar with this Miami team. Cameron Payne, just guys who I know can contribute 10 to 15 minutes. They're capable of hitting big three-pointers. They play very good defense as well. When you have Embiid on the floor makes things a lot easier because of his ability uh, to to basically patrol the paint and affect shots at the rim. So I think the Sixers defense uh, is playing very well offensively. You have arguably the most unstoppable player in the NBA. You have a secondary option like Tyrese Maxey, who's been phenomenal. I would also point out, Katie, Tyrese Maxey has absolutely slaughtered Miami throughout his career. Uh, he has, I think he averages more points against the Heat than any single opponent. So that will be a prop I will be very, keeping a yeah. very close eye on. His scoring prop, I anticipate that being around 24 and a half. Uh, they just don't possess the speed to really handle Tyrese Maxey uh, in transition. Even though the Heat are a phenomenal defensive team, he has just given them absolute 
fits. So really like Tyrese Maxey in this matchup. I like the 76ers as a whole. I know Miami uh, has a great defense. They have Jimmy Butler, who's capable of, you know, uh, producing anything. a Herculean net or yes. exactly <laughs> anything, but I just think they got a bad draw, Katie. The Sixers team yeah. uh, is too good. This is an elite seven seed. So, uh, yeah, it was just bad luck for Miami. I think the, the, the Sixers here win. I think they win convincingly. I mean, look, look, the Sixers with Embiid and without Embiid is like a tale of two different stories. They are 38 and eight with Joel Embiid this season. He is an absolute game changer. Probably could have been MVP, right? If he didn't, he was certainly on the course and I think well above who the leading candidates are right now. But unfortunately, he missed so much time. I actually, and you know what, this is just, Every once in a while, props, and you know, because you've worked with me before, I've got my super analytical side and I've got my vibe side. And I vibe with Miami every single playoff season, and it actually does me quite well. So I'm rocking with Miami in this one. I, I, I think Miami gets out of this. Shout out to Eric Spolstra. I mean, one of the best NBA coaches of all time. And like you said, Miami just has a different gear in the playoffs. Um, so I actually think they could squeak out of this w one thing. And I'm going to ask you about, you know, props on this one, Jimmy Butler steals last year was a steal against the books. They could not set this line high enough for Butler. I think he only missed out on it one or two times in that entire run. What are some props that maybe you're looking at for this one or players that we should be tuned in on? I mean, Jimmy Butler, I, I couldn't agree more. When you have Jimmy Butler, you have the ability to win any game, basically in any setting at any time. He is that good, and he plays that well in the postseason. So I certainly understand uh, backing Miami here. Uh, the one area I, I think Miami will struggle is I think they're just a little banged up, and they haven't yeah. really found – the chemistry with the rotation. They haven't been playing enough together for me to have that same level of confidence. Uh, but that being said, Jimmy Butler is going to Jimmy Butler. So I'll be looking at his props, frankly, to see if we can get, yeah. uh, you know, especially early until we, you know, the, the odds makers tend to pivot or default, I should say, uh, to Jimmy's regular season numbers. And we know that there's going to be a massive increase in his usage, playing time, production, most likely. So he's someone I'll be taking a close look at. Uh, I'm interested to see where Embiid's props are. I will have to, I do actually have to credit Bam out of bio, even though he's a bit inconsistent offensively. He's an elite defensive player, Katie. And I would say Bam out of bio defends Joel Embiid uh, probably as well as any individual player in the NBA. So if Embiid has a very high scoring line, I may be tempted to fade Embiid, even though I do think the Sixers ultimately pull this game out. Tyrese yeah. Maxey, though, is where my attention will be. I really believe okay. he's that X factor. His ability uh, to play in transition will give the Heat fits. I like him to score over 25 points in the game. I think we're likely to see his scoring line around 24 and a half. So that's someone I'll be looking very Take closely that over. at. Yes. Okay, love that. Uh, writing that down. Maxi over 24 and a half. Uh, all right, so the last play-in tournament game, we got the Atlanta Hawks versus the Chicago Bulls. Bulls are favored by three. This total, 218 and a half. Trey Young has recently returned from injury, but Atlanta is on a six-game losing streak. But you, you're taking the points here with the Hawks. Tell me why. I am, Katie, and I would say out of all of my picks, I have the least confidence in this one. This one uh, was tough, this yeah. This one is tough. To me, you know, you're playing to get basically, uh, you know, potentially swept by Boston if they do advance and then win another <laughs> game. But, uh, yeah, it's a tough spot for both teams. Neither team really played particularly well down the stretch. I think if Atlanta, uh, they have enough firepower, where I, I thought, you know, getting three points, uh, they could potentially squeak out a game. Again, they're so inconsistent. But Trey Young being back in the lineup, theoretically, I think they have a, a big scoring punch with DeJounte Murray. You've got Trey Young. You've got Jalen Johnson. You've got Clint Capella. They have Bogdanovich coming off of the bench. A lot of guys who can, in theory, you know, chip in 20 points. Uh, Chicago, really more of a thin roster as far as their roster construction. They rely heavily on their starters. They don't have a lot of bench production, but kind of a tale of two different teams as well. Chicago grinds teams out. They play a slower pace, whereas Atlanta tries to play up and down, get into high scoring environments. Again, just because I think these teams are evenly matched, 
and I can't really, you know, define who I think is a clear favorite. I just opted to take the points here, but I really don't have a strong feeling either way. It wouldn't surprise me if the Chicago Bulls blew out Atlanta or Atlanta blew out Chicago, or it's a close game. I really could see pretty much any scenario unfolding here. Totally. And when I was looking at this line too, I was like, I don't feel strong. I mean, the th- I feel like the three is just super sharp. Like I, mm-hmm. so I, I just, I'm, I'm eating the juice on this one or drinking the juice, I guess you could say. And, and just going bulls money line minus 155. I mean, when you look at the play in tournament, nobody's better than the Hawks. They're three and O in the play in tournament, right? They won um, versus the 10 seed in 2022 and versus the seven seed um, in 2023. And the Bulls are actually seeking their first playoff appearance since just 2022, so not too long ago. When I look at this Bulls team, they don't really have a great home court advantage. They haven't been as dominant at home, but the Hawks are just a bad road team. I mean, really bad. They've lost four straight road games, six of the last seven on the road. And in games where they're an underdog of at least three points, they're just 9-18 and 18 against the spread. No Jalen Johnson. I know the injury reports haven't come out yet, but I feel like that's going to be a real killer one for the Hawks. And who I think kind of is the X factor here for for the Bulls and why I'm just, you know, laying the minus 155 is is Alex Caruso. I feel like we've seen limited minutes from him recently. He's an older guy. They're trying not to use him too much, but this is where we see extended minutes from Caruso and that's where the magic happens. So I'm taking Bulls money line, but I think that the Hawks can cover. I mean, I I have I have no feel really on the spread. I would say also to your point, Katie, even though I take the Hawks, I'm kind of backtracking here. Uh, I feel like the Bulls' style of basketball lends itself better to success in the yes. playoffs and in the play and when things are kind of, you know, uh, games slow down. It becomes a lot more half-court offense, and uh, you just see uh, t- teams – Uh, grinding possessions a lot more. I think the Bulls, that style suits them a lot more than an Atlanta Hawks team that tries to play up and down and get into high scoring games. But I do have a prop. This is the one game that has props populated, Katie, that I absolutely love in this. And it's fading DeJounte Murray under 36 and a half points, rebounds, okay. and assists. Uh, DeJounte Murray has become that lead guard for Atlanta when Trey Young uh, suffered a significant, you know, multi-month injury. But he has very uh, stark uh, splits with and without Trey Young. With Trey Young active, DeJounte Murray assumes more of a secondary role and averages approximately 31 points, rebounds, and assists. Without Trey Young, that number jumps all the way up to 40 and a half. So uh, a massive contrast there. Trey Young back in the lineup for Atlanta appeared in the final three games. And while Trey Young didn't have maybe big games on the stat sheet, he was still an extremely high usage player. And DeJounte Murray stayed under this line, well under this line, in two of those three games. And then you factor in the pace of play, which I anticipate being much slower, in addition to a guy, as you mentioned, like Alex Caruso, who's an exceptional defender. Uh, Chicago, the strength of the team is really their perimeter defense. They're exceptional at limiting opposing guards. So I think this number is a few ticks too high for DeJounte Murray. It's by, even though it is the only game with props, this so far is by far my favorite prop on the board. All right, going to go ahead and lock that one in. We are going to take a quick break here. We get back more with prop stars and NBA playoff futures. Don't go anywhere. Why should you bet with Caesars Sportsbook? Two words, Caesars Rewards. Every bet brings you closer to the type of benefits only Caesars can offer. Hotel stays, VIP experiences, sports and concert tickets, and more. It's not just an app, it's an empire. Welcome back to Moxie Bats, presented by Caesars Sportsbook, here with our guy Alex Selznick, a.k.a. Prop Stars. All right, let's move on to NBA playoff futures. Uh, Best bet for the Eastern Conference. Yeah, my best bet for this is for the 76ers to win the East, Katie. Again, yeah. I just Joel Embiid looks like Joel Embiid, who, as we both mentioned, he was going to yeah. win the, unan- the oh, MVP unanimously. He was slide. having yeah. an even better season than last year when he won the award. Honestly, Embiid early in the year looked like the most dominant offensive force I have ever seen as far as an interior player is concerned. I really believe he was that good. And he's picked up right where he's left off. He hasn't missed a beat since returning to the lineup. I like what the Sixers did uh, at the trade deadline. They didn't make a big splash move, but they added 
veteran savvy players who could contribute, who have playoff experience as well. I think that will really benefit them down the stretch. They also learn to play without Embiid. So if you get into a situation where he maybe misses the game due to maintenance or gets dinged up, uh, while they didn't particularly have the best results, I think they're comfortable uh, navigating at least a game or two without Embiid. And yeah, he's just playing at such a high level. I think Tyrese Maxey is a very good secondary scoring option. Tobias Harris can kind of do a little bit of everything a la Aaron Gordon in Denver, similar to that. So I think the Sixers team is super live, even against a team like Boston, just with how dominant Embiid is playing. Uh, I think they could potentially win the entire East. So that's my, my favorite pick out East right now. Yeah, the Sixers right now have the third um, best odds to win the Eastern Conference at nine to one. Uh, then you got the Bucks at plus six twenty five, and the Celtics, of course, are the heavy favorite here at minus two hundred. I mean, the Celtics are there's a reason why they're favorite here, and I, I really like this pick with the Sixers. I went just one lower, slightly more value with the New York Knicks at 10 to one and like shout out to the New York Knicks. I mean, maybe it's because I live in the tri-state area and it's just the city is electric when the Knicks are good and they clinch the number two seed with that win um, over the Bulls overtime win, I believe over the Bulls. I know a lot of fans were wanting them to keep the number three seed because they're a little bit afraid of who they have to face next, which is the heat or the Sixers. Now I already told you, I think that the heat, advance to the next round, which is the only reason why I'm not agreeing with you and the Sixers, even though I have absolutely nothing to say uh, in contrast to what you said. But I like the Heat um, to advance over the Sixers. And when you look at this, you know, Miami has been hot. They've won seven of their final 10 games of the regular season. They have an average point differential of plus 11 and a half points per game, which is amazing. Um, New York, two and one in the season series um, over the Miami Heat. Now, New York doesn't like to see the heat in the playoffs, all right? If you think about the last couple of years, that has not been pretty for them. But this team feels a little bit different. You got Jalen Brunson playing out of his mind. I think he dropped 40 points the other night. So they get past that, and then maybe they get to the Bucs. I mean, Giannis still dealing with that calf strain, even though he has been cleared. So I'm just not fully sure on how far this Bucks team uh, Bucks team can take it. So I like the value on the Knicks. It's a, it's a little bit more of a long shot at 10 to 1, but – vibes you know like i'm just i'm riding the vibes with this one and the value uh looking at the western conference like i said don't ever count the warriors out uh let me see what their odds are wow they're way they're way down they're at <laughs> plus 2500 um to get to win the west here i don't know that i i would lay that we're both on dallas but i'll let you explain why uh, I have just been so impressed with this Dallas Mavericks team. I mean, first and foremost, Katie, uh, you have to mention Luka Doncic, who's my pick for MVP this year. I, I just him. think Luka has been absolutely phenomenal. Uh, he's averaged the second most combined points, rebounds, and assists in a single season behind only Wilt Chamberlain. He's truly having a historic season. It's a shame to me uh, that he's not going to win or he's unlikely to win the MVP because I truly feel he deserves it. They only won, I believe, four or five games less than the Denver Nuggets did. So I really believe Luca's playing at just an unbelievably high level offensively. Do you, nope. Go ahead, Katie. Sorry. Do you think it's 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 the chemistry between him and Kyrie Irving that's really kind of elevated his game and the team's game? Because, you know, Kyrie has been um, a polarizing figure in the NBA for several years now. Some would refer to him as like a cancer and to be bad for the locker room. But it really seems like He's found a home in Dallas and really brought this franchise kind of back, gave him an extra punch. I could not agree more, Katie. Kyrie Irving has assumed that Batman or the Robin to his bat to Lucas yeah. Batman role so well. He's embraced it. He's tremendous closing games. When Luca's off the court, you can stagger their minutes. You have an elite closer, an elite scorer. Kyrie has been phenomenal. I really believe, even though the numbers, if you look at his numbers compared to the last previous seasons, they look similar. He has just totally embraced playing winning basketball. Uh, so I've just been so impressed with Kyrie. I would say the biggest factor, though, or the X factor 
for this Mavericks team, Katie, that's won 16 of their last 18 games. Uh, you can pinpoint one specific thing. That is the insertion of Daniel Gafford into the starting lineup. Mm. A center. He was acquired at the trade deadline uh, from the Washington Wizards. Kind of an uh, undersized center, really known for his offense. Never really played more than 20, 22 minutes per game as a member of the Wizards. I, I had no idea that he was going to make such a difference early in his career, early when he joined the Mavericks. His first 10 or so games, he came off the bench. They decided, Jason Kidd decided to insert him into the starting lineup exactly 18 games ago, Katie. They have won 16 of those 18 games in addition to being just tremendous offensively. Their defense has been the real story. The Mavericks have been playing elite defense down the stretch, and I really attribute so much of that to Daniel Gafford just playing tremendous on both ends of the court, offensively, defensively. He's protecting the paint. I just love the roster construction as well. When you have guys like Kyrie and you have Luka who can just create as well as any players in the league, you surround them with just good shooters and players who can finish at the rim. They've done a phenomenal job doing that. P.J. Washington was another really good addition there, a guy who can stretch the floor, hit open threes. Uh, they've got Tim Hardaway, who can get as hot as any player off the bench. I just love the way this team is constructed. Uh, they're playing just tremendous basketball down the stretch, Katie. They're as hot as any team in the NBA. I would want to avoid them if I were the opponent. I really think on the backs of Luka, Kyrie, and this tremendous defense, I think they frankly could win the NBA title. And uh, uh, they're my best bet to both win the Western Conference. And I think if they make and the, finals, the title, I like them to win the finals as well. Wow. So I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you on the West. Um, you know, breaks my heart to say that, but I'm with you on the West. But the, the East is tough. I think it's going to be tough. Uh, well, I think the Celtics get back there again. Um, obviously, I have my money on the Knicks for like the value point, but it's, it's hard to bet against the Celtic teams. Although I will say that. Um, I don't know why I'm blanking on his name. His son's name is Duke. He's uh, Jason Tatum. Jason Tatum tends to fall apart a little bit um, in the NBA finals. So that's something to look out for. All right. The time has come for your Mox Lock. The one thing you are taking to the bank this uh, weekend or this week, rather. And I got to tell you, I've got a prop for this. I'm excited for this, Katie. Come on now. Yes. Come on now. That's and appropriate. Don't bet against the babyface assassin I in the playoffs. I agree. More experience, okay. more experience than any team uh, in the NBA when it comes to playoff basketball. I think this is a big matchup. My my locks, mocks, my mocks lock is the Warriors to advance uh, to beat the Sacramento Kings. I think this is a huge mismatch. I know we both went over this uh, multiple times throughout the course of this podcast and stream, but yeah, I just think the Warriors have way too much firepower. They're playing great basketball. They have the depth. And uh, frankly, they're just two teams headed in the opposite direction. Sacramento has not played well down the stretch. Uh, they're missing key players. The Warriors, they're peaking. Uh, just way too much to handle. I think they win this game. I think they win convincingly as well. I have to agree. Go Dubs. Moving on to the next round. Don't bet against the Babyface Assassin. You're taking a money line. I'm going ahead and lay that two and a half. And we're going to look to fade. DeAndre Fox in this game based on the Warriors defense. Prop stars, always a pleasure. I so appreciate you lending all of your talents and knowledge to us here on Moxie Bets. Um, let the people know where to find you. Obviously, at Prop Stars on social, you're across CBS Sports HQ, you're on Sportsline. T tell them what you're right. He's up 60 plus units. So if you're not signed up for Sportsline with this guy, I don't know what you're doing because you, you're missing out on money is Six, what you're doing. 60 plus and units the in the NBA. Uh, yeah, insane. I'm, it's been great. I'm also up 15 units in baseball already, Katie. So uh, it's been a great start to the MLB season. Uh, you can find me on the early edge, 10 a.m. Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific usually on a couple times a week there. I appear on CBS HQ with Eric Casillas uh, Monday through Friday as well. Uh, so yeah, I'm all over the place. So yeah, just follow me. I have a daily NBA article and I'll be producing a daily MLB article uh, shortly here as well. I love that you can follow him on social at prop stars with the Z on the end. This has been Moxie Bets presented by Caesar Sportsbook. Don't forget to follow us on social. Tweet us any questions that you may have. Good luck on your bets and hell yeah, NBA basketball.